All right, guys, we are ending it here. The ultimate guide to the ultimate question. The ultimate question of life that we are answering right now. What Pokemon cards should I buy? What Pokemon cards should I buy? The realest question you will ever be asked by anybody, and we're going to answer it right now. So, basically, I'm just going to go over every single factor that I think about when I purchase cards and what is a good purchase to me personally. We've narrowed it down to some categories, some uh, criteria, if you will. Um, and yeah, we're just going to talk about it right now. So, if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's just get into it. Just kidding. Before we get started, I'd like to thank our sponsor for this video, Skillshare. Super excited to be partnering with them as they provide such great tools and a great community for learning pretty much anything, honestly. There's thousands of classes to choose from. You can learn the basics of finances and markets. You can learn how to sell things on various platforms. And creatively, you can learn video editing, music production. Honestly, the list goes on and on. There's a ridiculous amount of classes on there. Personally, I've been using them to learn all of the above, but I've been hyper-focusing on the course called Inventory and Sales Management by the instructor Chris B. This course has really helped me organize the crazy amount of cards I have and keep track of all the financial aspects of buying and selling cards. So basically, Skillshare lets you learn to be the go at pretty much whatever you want to do. There's no ads and they are always adding classes and for less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, they're pretty much goaded. The first 1,000 subscribers to click the link in the description below will also get a free trial of the premium membership. So definitely check it out so you can explore everything they have. Anyways, back to the video. All right guys, we're back. And to me personally, there's six fundamental aspects I think are really important to purchasing cards. Exactly. In this chart that Van is pointing to, these are the six. The six are card appeal, condition, purchase price, room for growth, context, scarcity. They all go hand in hand and they honestly all inform each other. And honestly, I feel like we've talked about this in a different video, but I just wanted to reiterate and make a more concise, complete video about it. All right. So first category we're going to talk about is card appeal. There's definitely a lot of factors to card appeal. You could even argue that the other categories add to a card's appeal. All of them, all the categories bleed into each other, but we really tried to like divide it up as much as we could. But yeah, mainly in this category, we're going to talk about aesthetic appeal of a card, artwork, Pokemon. This is all really, really subjective. And at the end of the day, it's just pretty much whatever hits for you. It's pretty much subjective, but I have some examples. Things like Latios being more expensive than Latios. Some people like Pikachu. And then some people just like the designs of cards like Eerie's. Some people like other things more. Some people like EXs and new EXs. Yeah, so basically at the end of the day, this is your own intuition and this is your own judgment. And honestly, this is why I always push the idea of you kind of just buy what you like. Because if you buy what you like, then you pretty much never lose. All right, so one example for us when we were buying a card based off totally off of appeal was full art waifus. Yeah, honestly, I'm going to say it though real quick is we coined that term. Yeah, we were the first ones to talk about it. We were the pioneers. Watch, I'm going to show you guys real quick. All right, so check it out. Our video right here. You see that? November 12th, 2020. Our PSA submission, 200 plus cards, bulk Pokemon cards, plus basketball cards, grading subs. <laughs> but yeah, no, November 12th, 2020. Look at what I say right here. Right, and then Whitney, waifu cards are the meta low key. Did you hear that? What waifu did... cards are low key, the meta low key. I don't know what you said. Low key? Low and then Van questions key. it. Low key? Got... And low I just key? said it was low key. <laughs> but yeah. So we coined that. I'm putting that out there because watch, we, you type in waifu Pokemon cards right here. Look at these scrubs. The flex gods said it was two months ago talking about waifu cards spiking. And then what do we have? Full art trainers, the waifu Pokemon cards two months ago. Cardinal Gaming, the GOAT, two months ago talking about it. Waifu cards two months ago. Waifu cards two months ago. Waifu cards two months ago. Do not get scammed from Pokemon waifu cards three months ago. A little bit earlier than two months ago. Yeah. But if we do the math, we were talking about waifus six months ago? That was like six months ago, yeah. Yeah, that was like six months ago. We were also buying them before that video. Yeah, exactly. 
But yeah, that's besides the point. The point I was trying to make is that we just bought a lot of these cards based solely on the artwork and how sick they looked. And waifus are just dope in general. But to me personally, the artwork just looks super, super good. And I never bought modern cards ever. Like, I mean, actually I buy modern cards, but I never really go out of my way to buy, go out of my way to buy modern singles. But I just had to collect these because the art looks super, super good. And they just blew up. People will say buyouts, people will say other things, twice baked Jake, all that stuff, but it was bound to happen sooner or later, IMO. So the number one step is to always just buy what you like and eventually Pokemon card investors will blow it up because they will run out of things to talk about. So they'll <laughs> talk about something sooner or later. <laughs> but yeah, buy good art, buy good card design, buy cards that just really do it for you. Like by just looking at it and you just feel it. It makes you feel something deep down, you know? All right, so next factor is gonna be a numbers thing and that's scarcity. So if you're a data nerd, get into it. Scarcity is good. And so basically scarcity is determined by supply and demand pretty much. And every YouTube channel always talks about it. Every investment YouTube channel talks about the supply and demand charts and we have it right here. So basically it's pretty straightforward and S is supply, this is demand. If there's a lot of supply and very little demand, price equals low. If there's high demand and low supply, wow, price go up. So <laughs> <laughs> price goes stonk. So that just sums it up. We're not gonna talk about it that deep. Yeah, I'm pretty sure a bunch of other YouTube channels have something like that. I think we have something like that, I think. We probably do. I mean, just go research economics, I guess. I don't know that much about economics. I just buy Pokemon cards. Or watch all of our videos. So basically, I'll take three steps before purchasing a card just to check its scarcity. Just a note, this isn't going to tell you how scarce a card truly, truly is in reality. It just gives you a good perspective of things. Because at the end of the day, like someone might have like 50 million copies of their house or something. You just never know. Sometimes people don't list these. Yeah, exactly. And so there's a lot of nuance to it, but this is just a generalized idea of checking how scarce a card is. And so I'll check eBay first. That's usually what I'll do. So we're gonna show you really bad examples to begin with. Like these are extremes, but Champions Path Charizard, you look it up, I put minus custom. They're still gonna come up with repacks, but right now there's 408 listings. So that means there's 400 for sale already. Yeah, so like they're 408 on eBay just by itself. And that's ridiculous. I mean, minus repacks, there'll probably be like 350 or something like that. Yeah, something around there. And that's an insane amount. So that's on the extreme high. And then another extreme high in the next example of how I look it up is I'll go to PSA pop reports and we go here. And so for the Charizard, the rainbow one right here, there's literally 4,790 tens. Like there's that's actually, ridiculous. There's also 6,500 in total. Yeah, it's just, there's literally 6,500 graded already. Someone got a three. <laughs> when you get a three, wow. That's funny. And then lastly, I'll check, just to compare data too, because it's good to check multiple sources, I'll check TCG player. And there's like 61 listed, which is quite high still. Well, it's quite high, like, if it's both of them. Yeah, there's, so there's 300 on eBay, and that's at a minimum. I'm underestimating. There's 300 on eBay, there's 60 on TCG player, and there's 6,500 graded. Yeah. So and also this set's going to be reprinted more, so... Yeah, and people are going to keep submitting more, and they're going to keep pulling more, so it's just going to keep coming in. And so basically, the supply is really high on this. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. And so we'll give you a perspective of a, another card that's on a better end of the spectrum. Yeah. All right, guys. So one example of a card that I bought recently using this data is this Ponyta right here focus is shiny ponytail from platinum arceus looks super dope but i'm not saying go and buy this card really quick because we got to do that because we're on youtube now and we'll get canceled if we say buy cards <laughs> but so basically what i'm saying is i bought it using this information and i'll show you the information for this card right here so first example of the data on ebay ponytail sh11 there's literally eight copies that's it there's eight in existence yeah but there's eight on ebay yeah. we're just there's no way you can know how many are in existence no matter what that's yeah. impossible but there's eight listed on ebay that's pretty much it i want to bet they're all in pretty bad condition i'm just gonna click 
Lightly played. Um, not the best condition. Definitely not a 9. Maybe like a 7 or an 8. So, that's what you're stuck with, honestly. And then we'll go to the pop report. And we're here. And there is 34 9s, 13 10s, and then 28s, pretty much. 75 in total. 75 in total. That's it. Compare that to Charizard. Compare that to Champion's Path Charizard that is still being printed. And people are going to say that Modern is going to be the new vintage. But that's no, an aside. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that that was a lower pop than Shining Phase Charizard. And Shining Phase just barely came out. Yeah, it does. That's crazy. Yeah. Shining Phase Charizard is like 400 or 500 graded or something already. Already? Yeah. It's crazy. But that's an aside. We'll talk about that kind of stuff later. But so there's 75 graded in total of that. There's eight raw on eBay. And then on TZG Player, we got seven. And that's pretty much it. All right, so that's a quick summary of how to check out scarcity. Of course, there's a lot more nuance to that. Like, of course, like comparing a Ponyta, like this Ponyta to a Charizard isn't the most direct example, but it comes with from experience. You just got to keep looking up cards and start to keep, I don't know, in a way, a lot of this is like a muscle. You just got to build up the muscle and the database of information. So it's like, you know that the Ponyta is at this, you know, more popular cards are at this, you know, like more common cards are here. You start to know the numbers basically. And there's so much more nuance to it. I'm not saying like, oh my God, lower number means it's infinitely better. Because at the end of the day, there's some cards that were never graded because they weren't worth it until now in this crazy like hype. So you gotta keep that in mind. Like people are gonna start grading a bunch of cards and doing all this. So you gotta keep in mind so much more the context. That's actually one of the categories if you guys remember. So we'll talk about that later. They all loop. I'm gonna keep saying that too. Yeah. They're all interrelated, but you just got to understand where the card is at in its own ecosystem and in the ecosystem of Pokemon cards. All right, guys, next factor is condition. I would normally say condition before scarcity because condition is like super, super important. But at the end of the day, it's pretty contextual. Like what's good condition is super contextual based on the market. Yeah, and that's pretty much like it just goes in the loop that we were talking about. Loop loop but yeah basically there's just some cards where okay at the end of the day let's say it like this you want the cleanest 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 best condition card possible you want a psa you want a beckett gold star yeah but sometimes you can't get that sometimes you can't get that with specific cards this goes back to understanding the ecosystem but with specific cards you're pretty much gonna have to take what you can get and so i have a couple of good examples right here so a good example is gold stars right here. There's 13, pretty scarce already on eBay. I minus PSA. There's 13 English ones. And that's pretty much it. And I can bet you that they're all in pretty messed up condition. Except for the ones that are like high price. Yeah, probably the ones that are like 500, but they might be messed up too. So we'll go to this 500 one right here. Crazy bad corner right there. Bad corner, bad corner. It's like a seven. And they want 500 for it. So, kind of rough, honestly. This one has a crease. And yeah, it has this peeling. Really hacked up. All these are hacked up. Just take my word for it, honestly. So basically the point I'm trying to make with this condition spiel is yes, you want the best possible card you can get because SM Pratt says a lot, but he's like, what is it? Scarcity, condition, the mintier, the rarer the better or something like that that like sums it up but basically sometimes you can't get the mintiest ones depending on the market so, so sometimes you have to take what you do, what you get and that's based on context which is based on scarcity and it's like full circle yep we are in the circle gamers but so you basically just need to understand your card and the market for the card and how many exist and how many clean ones exist and so sometimes it's okay to buy a card that isn't the mintiest one as long as you're getting a good price on it and it's actually really hard to get one in that condition. So the next thing is context and context is a super, super expansive concept. Yeah, it's really big. It's really deep. It's really important to think about though. So I'm going to try my best to explain it, but there's so much nuance and small things to think about in it. But so basically when I say context, I'm talking about it in basically you want to consider the card and you want to consider how it was released and how that release 
affects its scarcity, affects its condition, and then you also want to consider the climate of the hobby in which it was released too. All right, so one example of context really quick I'm going to put out is Sky Ridge. And basically, to give you perspective on that set, last WotC set, and... We've heard the rumors. Rumors. One print run. I'm not really sure. I'm pretty sure there was only one print run. But that's what a lot of collectors say. I've read it multiple times. I can't fact check it myself. But it's really, really scarce. It was really during a time when Pokemon wasn't super popular. WotC was like, heck it, I'm out. So a lot of Sky Ridge cards... Are hard to find and so that's a good context to understand another example is versus series it was a japanese only set it has cool gym leaders on it adds to the art appeal full circle once again anyways but yeah it was only printed in japanese so it has a lot of artworks that no one would ever see here and then once people start seeing them maybe they catch on to it also one really important part of context i think is when you purchase the card so you want to understand the market and you want to know if the market's cold, if it's hot, if a certain card is overblown by a YouTuber, and you just just typically want to avoid hypes and trends. You basically want to buy when there's not a lot of hype. Like right now in general, it's in a way a bad time to buy because there's so much hype for every Pokemon card, but you just want to avoid buying Pokemon cards that are in the spotlight. Like, if you're gonna buy cards now, avoid cards that people are talking about. Avoid YouTuber cards, avoid all that stuff. Because basically, to give you an example, if you bought Unlimited Charizard right after lo the Logan Paul box break, you and you look at the price now, you literally lost half your money. Yeah, you took an L. Yeah, it's a big L. So you basically just wanna understand where the market is right now, which is the market is hot, but you had to find cards that aren't hot in the market. Or if the market cools down, I have a weird theory about this, but part of me feels like the market won't ever cool down because I always hear so many people talking about, oh, bro, when the market cools down, I'm going to buy so many things. And if everyone's thinking like that, then how is it? How's that going to happen? Yeah, how's it going to happen if the market goes down and then everyone's buying everything and it's just like... Yeah, it just doesn't seem plausible. Too many people are in it right now, so that's a bad mindset. That's an aside, though. But yeah, so you just want to understand the context of the market. There's so many things but i'm just going to give you like one more example but there's so many ways to just think about context all right so one good example i think is armored mewtwo once again i'm not saying go buy this card it just has a lot of cool context going for it which i think makes it a good purchase if you can get it for the right price but in aside armored mewtwo right here it's a full art card people are freaking out over full arts full arts are crazy as mewtwo mewtwo is cool Mewtwo is armored, so he's doing a cosplay, I guess. <laughs> People like cosplay, but no. So basically, the situation of this card where I think it makes it really, really strong is that it was released in this lunchbox right here. And basically in our market right now, there's a lot of people who love modern cards and that's all they collect. And it's a lot of people collect modern and a lot of people collect full arts and that's all they do. And then this lunchbox was released Guess what? It was released before everyone went crazy about Pokemon. I remember when everyone was like, oh my gosh, Hidden Fates. And that there wasn't that even many people looking for Hidden Fates at that time. This lunchbox would sit. That lunchbox would sit forever. It would sit forever for eternity. I really would, wanted one, but I never got one. Yeah, it would just sit there. And so the fact that it sat, they probably didn't make too many because all they had to do was meet demand. So they printed however many. And if they did one print run and that never got bought up, then they're like, okay, cool bro and it was during a time when no one was buying up pokemon cards so these would sit and people would just slowly buy them over time and they probably were like okay we're done we're done making this yeah and guess what there's literally only 11 sealed ones listed on ebay right now there might be more you never really know it's just the situation and also guess what this is a lunchbox like this market towards kids i feel like literally people who would buy this are like children van was a child and he wanted one <laughs> you know what i mean but at the end of the day, no one wanted them. Yeah. And also some good context on it is that I think that the Mew would move or the Mewtwo would move around or something in the box. Mm hmm So then it would get more like white end and stuff. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say too, that it's it's so easy to damage them the way it was packaged. Yeah, and that's why most of them are nines and it's hard to get a ten. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So context, super important. So many other ways to think about context, but this one has a lot going for it. Like it was made when there was no hype, not a lot of people were buying it, hard to get a 10, and mainly a product marketed towards like kids, 
So, I mean, all Pokemon is marketed towards kids, but the lunchbox especially, I feel like. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're not just going to bring your Pokemon lunchbox to your job. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so, it just has a lot. So, keep in mind context. Think about your ways of analyzing context and just go from there. All right, so next thing is purchase price. And purchase price is pretty self-explanatory. You just want to buy low, sell high. Yep. At the end of the day... Because basically, if you can get a $100 card for $50, then you're chilling. But I guess the nuance I wanted to make with this one really quick is just sometimes it's okay to pay market price, and sometimes it's okay to pay above market price. It just depends on the context and the scarcity and the condition. Yeah, and all the other things we were talking about. But basically, a lot of times, sometimes you'll, there will be a card, and it'll never be listed, and it never comes up, and maybe the only one ever listed is like this one for like $5,000 and it sucks and it's in so bad condition and then you see one and like the last comp you see is maybe someone bought it for like a thousand but then you see one someone listed it for 1500 and you'll be like oh I'll never see that card again if I don't buy it right now and it's in pretty decent condition pretty good condition that's the only thing I just wanted to like say because sometimes I won't buy a card because I'll be like oh that's like way more expensive than it used to be or oh, that's like way more than other comps, but then I'll regret it because someone buys it and I'm like, oh, that was actually a really good deal, all things considered. Yeah. So if the other traits make up for it, you might just want to consider buying it. Purchase price is really, really important because I think profit is made at purchase and that applies to most. You just want to get everything for like as dirt cheap as possible, but sometimes... It's just worth paying a little bit extra if it has all those other traits like milked into it. Yeah, and then also the next thing we go over will be really good for this because then if you buy at market price, it's really good for growth. Yep. I don't know why I'm pointing. Lastly is room for growth. And that means you just have to assess at the end of the day how much someone will be willing to pay for something in the future. It's really hard to tell, but you just got to use all previous information and make an educated guess. Common Vivid Voltage Pikachu will not be a $200 card. It also doesn't exist. Because it does not exist, exactly. <laughs> you caught it. But basically it's, I don't know, someone bought, what, a $60 Common Pikachu from Team Up or something. In a PS, in a slab? Yeah, exactly. And it's like, bruh, like, no. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Like, that will never go up. That was like an L. I mean, it'll probably go up in like 500 years. Maybe, possibly, yeah. In the future, when we have robots. <laughs> robots start investing in Pokemon cards. Yeah, there'll be a robot spike. Yeah. But you just have to consider all the criteria, criteria, pretty much. It's literally, like, everything we've been talking about. Yep, and that's it. And I feel like those create the foundations in which people want to pay more at the end of the day. So you kind of just have to keep that in mind. And yeah, so Pokemon cards is really optimized right now because I wanted to give you guys an example of finding something that will might have value in the future using current information, but it's hard to find because I feel like everyone sees the gaps in the market and it's there's less obvious gaps. But in sports cards, there's a lot of gaps. Like a year ago, Luca cards, right here, I'll show you. Luca cards, this dude, he was going for so, 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 so much. And then Trey Young was going for so, so, so little. Like, I'm talking, like, Luca cards were going for, like, ugh, like $600 just straight up raw, I swear. And then Trey Young cards, though, in this form raw, I was getting from them for, like, I got one for, like, $30. So it's, like, $500 versus $30 for a player that was drafted in the same year and a player that pretty much has all-star potential. They also put up similar numbers at one point. They do put up similar numbers. And so basically what happened is Luca fell down and Trey Young went up a little bit. There's still a discrepancy because Luca has more hype. But that's the parallel I'm trying to make. Is so basically you want to find a card that has a value and you think it's like pretty a like stable, not stable, but it represents that type of card market and then you have your card. So let's say we have Charizard as the base. And then it, you have like some sort of Blastoise as the bottom. Yeah, and so you're like, "Oh, like Blastoise if you think it feels low and you feel like it should be more because the Charizard is more, then I think that's a good sign to buy it, basically. Yeah, because if one's on the bottom floor and one's at the top floor, one of them has to go up or down. Yeah, if they if, if it feels off, 
you can tell basically at the end of the day so basically what's going to happen is either the blastoise goes up because of the demand for the charizard is there or the charizard goes down usually it's a little bit of both and they even out they don't ever meet because obviously charizard will be more than blastoise but if this feels really big the gap feels so so off it's bound to close a little bit sooner or later so if you're buying the bottom card here then you're making a good move yeah, you just have to be ready to pull the trigger because sometimes you got to commit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's a lot to think about, and a lot of it is like a muscle. I feel like all buying cards is a muscle. You kind of just train it. You consider condition. You consider all these factors we just talked about in this whole video, and that's how you base your decisions. So, yeah, you just work out that muscle, you know? Mm -hmm. So keep buying cards and just trying, and you take your wins and your losses the more and more you do it, the more and more you succeed and fail. And so success will help you gain confidence and you'll find like a wave to ride and like momentum and you'll feel good. And then like I know like it's hard to take L's financially, but your losses will help you understand what not to do. So yeah, just keep buying stuff. Just also to make sure there's no repercussions except your ego and maybe some lunch money. Because if like that's the case, you can look at yourself and be like, oh, I did this wrong. I did this wrong. And not be like, hate your life and be stressed because you're stressed on money because yeah, please don't go into debt because you're investing in pokemon cards mm -hmm. yeah like give yourself room to mess up because that's how you're gonna learn at the end of the day like i've messed up so many times like <laughs> so so many times like i bought a hollow entei thinking it was a, a gold star i bought a bunch of messed up kobe's i've done a bunch of dumb stuff but i've also done a bunch of good stuff too so you just gotta keep going and that's pretty much it if you don't try like yeah like you can you could have watched this whole video but if you don't try and actively try to improve the way you think and the way you approach buying cards then you got you won't improve yeah so yeah that's pretty much it it's like literally like anything else if you do enough then you'll be chilling so hopefully you guys make some good purchases make some mogul moves and we'll see you in the next video i hope this helps you guys out and like and subscribe like and subscribe and comment too comment too say what's up i know we haven't been on in a minute we'll see you guys soon yeah later bye